Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk all about how to fish the Berkeley Power Bait Trout Worm. I got a bunch of them here. We're going to talk all about how to rig them, how to fish them. So at the end of this video, you'll know everything about these Berkeley Power Bait Trout Worms. They're amazing for trout. They're probably one of the best way to catch trout. So stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll teach you everything I know about how to fish these Berkeley Power Bait Trout Worms. If you're new to my channel, go ahead down below and hit the subscribe button for me. I'm trying to reach that thousand subscriber mark. So if you could help me out with that, that would be greatly appreciated and you won't miss any more of my fishing tips or videos. Now let's get into everything you need to know about this trout worm so you could head out on the creek or your nearest lake and catch a whole bunch of trout. So the first thing you're gonna need is a rod and reel. This is gonna be the same rod and reel I talked about in my last video about all the different rigs I like to use for trout. I like a five foot six ultralight rod. If it's under six foot, you're good. That's about the length that I like. A lot of the times I'm fishing a lot of small creeks and ponds and stuff like that. So the smaller rod works a lot better and you get a better fight out of the trout with a lighter rod. So anything under six foot that's a light or ultralight action will work just fine. And then I have this paired with a 500 Shimano Sedona reel, but any small reel will work perfect. Anything in that 500 to thousand size range or just anything that's really small. Um, you want this to stay again, relatively light. You're gonna be fishing a lot of creeks and streams and maybe some little ponds. You're gonna do a lot of walking. So just light tackle makes it more fun and it makes it a lot easier while you're out there on the creek fishing for these trout. You don't have to worry about hitting anything or anything like that. So this is the setup that I like, especially because you're casting very light lures. These do not weigh a lot. So the lighter rod also helps with that as well. So that's gonna be the setup that you need. And then we'll get into some line, some baits and rigging, and then we'll show you how to fish it at the end of the video. So for the line on this rod, you're gonna have two options. If you're comfortable tying a leader knot, so like the Alberto knot, uni to uni knot, whatever you like, from your braid to your fluorocarbon, then I would suggest putting 10 pound braid on here. It's gonna get you better float and more casting distance with this uh, setup that I'm about to show you. So if you can do 10 pound braid, do that, and then tie a four pound fluorocarbon leader to it. If you're not comfortable doing that and you just wanna use some basic line, this is also what I like to use a lot of the times. I've used this for years. It's called P-Line Floor Clear. It's in that four pound test. Uh, it'll get you some good casting distance. The four pound test will get you a lot of bites and this is very user friendly line. So if you don't feel comfortable with the braid, just go with the four pound P-Line Floor Clear. It's very affordable. I think it's like $10 for this 300 yard spool. You could spool this reel up probably five or six times off of this one spool. So go ahead and just get you a spool of this and you'll be just fine. To make up the rest of this rig, very simple. You only need three other components to make the whole rig. The first component, which is the one that you can actually skip if you do not want to use it, is going to be a Leland Lures trout float right there. Um, you can use a weighted float if you want. I've used them before, like the little cigar style ones, red foam, and they have a weight on the bottom. You can use those ones if you're casting into a lake, it'll get you more casting distance. But if you can get away with this float, this is a better one. It goes under a lot easier, it's more sensitive, so you'll know when you're getting bites, and it's easier on your line, and it makes changing depths very easy. So these floats, they have a little slit along the side here, and then they come with these little black pegs. And then whenever you're rigging that up, you would just peg your float and then it's onto your line. And then you can slide it up and down your line super easy, makes changing the depth really fast. If you feel like you're fishing a hole and you're not fishing deep enough or something, you can just slide it up real fast, get six inches, three inches, a foot of depth more. And it makes it just super, super fast changes on the creek. So that's why I like these floats the best. The next thing you're gonna need is going to be some jig heads themselves. Um, this is the jig head that I use right here. This is a 132nd ounce silver jig head with a size 8 hook in it. Um, you can use other colors as well if you like. I have some chartreuse ones, I have some gold ones. You can use a 164th ounce if you want. Um, the 164th to 132nd is about the size you want and you want to make sure it has less than a size 8 hook in it just because that's gonna give you the best presentation and trout are sight feeders. So the bigger the hook, the less bites you're gonna get. So that's the jig head that I like to use. I buy these in 25 packs. Um, you can stick with just the basic silver and gold. It'll work just fine. But like I said, if you like a colored jig head, feel free to use a colored jig head. It won't change it at all. And you might even catch some more fish because it's something different than what everybody else is doing. You could throw a chartreuse worm with an orange jig head or a pink one with a chartreuse head and change the presentation that's different than just the worm on a jig head. So feel free to change that up and get some extra bites that way. And then the last thing that you're gonna need for your rig here 
is going to be the power bait trout worm itself. This is the floating trout worm. They come in 15 packs, they're $5 each. Um, pick up a couple different colors if you want. Uh, your favorite color will work. If you have a favorite, you could literally get away with just one color. I use pink probably 95% of the time, but I do have some other colors here depending on the conditions of what I'll use. And there's even more colors out there that I don't have. So if you like a different one better than I do, go ahead and pick that one. I promise you it'll work. Um, I have the cheese color. I have the orange peel, which is like an orange with chartreuse glitter. And then I have just the plain chartreuse. Um, usually my rule of thumb, if the water's really dirty or the fish are very fresh, they're prone to eating bright colors. Fresh meaning that they were just stocked recently. That's when I'll go to the pink and the chartreuse. Um, the orange peel starts to work good after they've been in the lake a little bit or the water starts to clean up a little bit, but it's not quite clear yet. And then the last color is that cheese color. This works really well when the fish are starting to get very pressured. Everyone's gonna be throwing these bright colors. You can try this one and they haven't seen that one yet. Or it works really good when the water's super clear. It's much more natural. These are the colors that I use the most, but I know there's plenty others out there. So if you like a different one more, like I said, feel free to get those. They will all work, I promise you that. The key is the action and the scent and making sure you rig it up properly. The color does not usually matter as much but a lot of times I'll switch colors if you're fishing a hole and the fish are biting, then they stop biting that color. You can go from say the pink and then put on the chartreuse and you'll get more bites just because you changed colors and it's a different look to them. Even though you're using the same exact rig, you'll still catch more fish because it's a different color. So rigging this rig up is going to be super simple. The first thing you're gonna do is you're going to tie your fluorocarbon leader on if you need to do that, but if you just went with the straight fluorocarbon, skip that step. So then you're going to take your jig head out of the pack here. You're going to tie this on to the end of your line before you put the float on. Um, I just like to put it on. It adds some weight to the end of the line, make sure everything's not flapping around in the wind and stuff. So just tie your jig head on to start. And then I'll take my power bait worm. They come in a little string in the pack. So pull it out. You'll see where the tapered ends come down and you just pinch that off and then you'll have your worm. They're usually about three inches long. So then you'll take your jig head and you'll just thread the worm straight onto the jig head. You'll go around the bend of the hook and then pop it out where once you feed it up on the jig head, it'll end up being very straight, just like that. Um, you want it to hang super straight and not all kinked up and anything like that. It'll make it look very natural in the water and it'll get you more bites. So now that you have the actual power worm rigged up itself, the only other thing to do is put the float on and then you're ready to fish. So I will approach the creek wherever I'm going to fish at and I'll kind of see how deep the water is. So a lot of times you have to guess and check so you can put it on three foot up from your jig head and then you don't hit the bottom. So you move it up to four foot and then you're hitting the bottom too much so then you move it down to three and a half and that's the perfect depth that you need to be at for the fish. The key is that you just want this bait barely bouncing along the bottom maybe just above the bottom and that's where the trout are going to lay and as long as you're bringing it in front of their face you're going to get some bites so i will feed my line into the slit on the side of this bobber however far above the jig head that i want to fish and then you'll just put your line on the opposite side of the slit and take your peg and you'll peg it right in there and then this bobber will stay in place and you can slide it up and down whenever you need to. Now that we've showed you how to rig it and everything you need to fish this effectively, let's head out onto the creek and then we'll go to a lake this afternoon and we'll uh, show you how to fish the bait in different conditions in the creeks and in the lakes. And hopefully we'll catch a couple fish on video and help you learn how to fish this trout power worm effectively and it'll help you catch a lot more trout out on the stream. So now that we've talked about how to rig up a power worm, let's talk about how to fish it. There's gonna be two ways that I like to fish it. Well, two places, either the creeks or in the lakes. So we're at a creek right now. We're gonna to go to a lake in this afternoon to show you that as well. But we're gonna start with how to fish in a creek. So as you can see here, we have this current seam coming down through here. In this current seam, there's some fish sitting right in front of me right here. So the first way we're gonna do it is with the bobber. We're gonna cast up in the current seam and let it drift down through and then maybe give it a couple jigs here and there to give it some action to get them interested. Pick your favorite color, whichever one you want. We're starting with this cheese color. The water's a little bit clear here, so we're going with a more natural color than like a pink or a chartreuse. So we're gonna throw it in there and see if we can get a couple bites. So we're just gonna cast it out right where the pot of fish is. It's in the current right now and we're just letting it drift. Give it a couple jigs and then let it sit. 
and we had a bite, but I missed him. Okay, so we're gonna reel it back in. We're gonna cast it back out there, right where that pot of fish is. Let it sit in the current. Give it a couple jigs. Let it sit. And now we pulled it out of the current that time. So reel it back in, and then you just keep fishing the current seam like that. So we throw it back in that current seam, let it sit, give it a couple jigs. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna lengthen our leader a little bit and try and get it down more to the trout's level. We're only going about six inches. I'm gonna reel it back up. We're gonna throw it right back in that current seam where we've been throwing and let it sink down. And give it some jigs, try and get their attention. A lot of times when you jig it like that, it'll get them to look at it and then when you dead stick it, they'll come and actually eat it. So just a couple, you jig it two or three times and then just let it flow with the current. Then let it go a little bit and then jig it two or three more times and then let it flow with the current until you get them to eat it. There we go, just like that. See the bobber go under? As soon as it goes under, set the hook and then you'll catch a trout. And then you just keep repeating until you catch as many as you want because a lot of times you'll catch more and more and more because usually once you find one, you find a bunch in the same hole. So you got that guy right there. Power worm on the jig head right in the roof of the mouth. Super easy, they don't usually swallow it so you just take them off the hook and let them go. Don't have to rebait, and you can get right back in there and catch another one. Now let's talk about the second way I like to fish this in the creeks is I'll actually take this float off and just have my jig head and my worm. So I have no float this time, but what this will allow me to do is make sure it's on the bottom where the trout are, or if you're fishing like a log jam or something like that, which we may fish later, you'll be able to actually fish it down the side of the log jam and not have your bobber getting hung up on the sticks and stuff that are up top. So you do the same thing, you cast it right back into the current seam where the fish are, and now you won't be able to see your bobber, but you just give it some gentle jigs and you kind of just slowly jig it back to you and just like that, they'll eat it. You, they kind of bit that one a little bit better. This one's actually a brown trout. So instead of using the bobber and getting it stuck in the current, let's grab this guy first and then I'll explain. Oh, he came off. Okay, so he came off, he's back in the water. So now, instead of having the bobber, which can get stuck in the current seam and go that way, or get blown by the wind up this way and make an unnatural drift, your line is going direct to the lure. So you can make it look super natural in the water and you'll get more bites that way sometimes when the fishing's tough. So let's throw it back in there and try again. We'll let it sink back down to the bottom. And like I said, you just give it some gentle twitches along the bottom as you're bringing it back to you and you'll feel them bite it just like that one did right there. You'll feel them clamp down on it. It'll get heavy and you'll feel them start swimming with it. And you just set the hook and reel them in. So cast it back out, slow jigs back. And a lot of times they'll follow it until they decide they want to eat it. So those are going to be the two ways that I like to fish the power worm in the creek. And then, like I said, we'll go to a lake this afternoon and I'll show you how we fish it in a lake. It's much easier, and a lot of times you can even use live bait to help. Oh, there was one right there while we were filming. He chased it all the way in and bit it right there. Um, a lot of times you can use live bait to help get more bites. Uh, these are delayed harvest creeks, so you gotta make sure your rules allow it. But if you can, you can tip this with a wax worm and you'll get more bites because it has some extra scent and uh, natural presence with the live bait. But we can just use the power worm here, so that's all we're doing. When we go to the lake this afternoon, we'll show you the setup there and we'll catch a bunch of fish hopefully and teach you how to fish power worm in a lake too. Now that we talked about how to fish the power worm in a creek, we're actually on a lake here. They just stocked this one recently using a pink power worm instead of the cheese color or any other color because the water's pretty dirty here. Same float setup, except in a lake, the fish usually like to suspend. So if it's eight foot deep, you still only need your float about three foot down. I usually don't typically go more than like three to four foot below uh, the float to my jig head and then today we have some wind so you can cast it out and leave it sit there and just let the wind do the jigging because your float will go up and down with the waves and it'll jig your power worm or you can throw it out there and jig it like we did in the creek so we'll do that right now and see if we can get a couple bites 
So I hope you enjoyed that little segment of us fishing it on the creek and out on the lake. The fish in the creek were very cooperative. They were ready to bite and we caught a bunch on film there. Uh, unfortunately, the fish in the lake, they were not very cooperative. We actually didn't catch any, but like I said, in the lake, it's very similar fishing. Cast it out there as far as you can. Keep it suspended up above the fish, maybe three to four foot at most, and just give it little jigs every once in a while and then let it sit until you fish it all the way back to shore or the wind blows it in, and then you just make another cast and keep going. Once you catch one, you're around a school of them, so just keep catching as many as you want, and they'll keep biting it. And if they stop biting, like I said, just change your colors up, and a lot of times you can keep getting bites on the same worm, and it's a very effective technique to catch lots of trout. I hope this video helped you learn how to fish this power worm effectively. And I hope you head out onto your local creek or lake and catch a whole bunch of trout using some of these tips from this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like down below and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of my fishing tips or videos. Thanks for watching.